Just days before the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, the trial into the devastating terror attack that prompted America to invade Afghanistan to apprehend the Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden still remains in the pre-trial phase. The prosecution of the alleged mastermind and other plotters restarts on Tuesday, stirring new hope for justice and retribution. For nearly 15 years, Khalid Sheikh and his co-defendants have been locked up at the U.S. naval base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. They will be appearing in the military tribunal for the first time since early 2019. After proceedings were halted by a 17-month delay due to the COVID-19 pandemic. On Tuesday, family members of some of the nearly 3,000 people who were murdered two decades ago will get to observe as proceedings continue. But hopes for a jury trial and verdict anytime soon are slim. The pre-trial phase could easily last another year, according to the defense attorneys. Scores of motions are due to be heard, demanding evidence that military prosecutors refuse to hand over. Attorneys say the five defendants are all suffering from the lasting effects of severe torture and decades-long isolation endured in secretive CIA black sites between 2002 and 2006. Khalid Sheikh Mohammad, dubbed KSM, this 56-year-old Pakistani citizen raised in Kuwait, was put in charge of the 9-11 plot by Osama bin Laden. He was captured in Rawalpindi, Pakistan in March 2003 and taken to several CIA black sites. He was subjected to waterboarding 183 times over four weeks. In September 2006, he confessed he was responsible for the 9-11 attack other bombings and the murder of the U.S. journalist Daniel Pearl. Amar al Baluchi, a citizen of Pakistani origin from Kuwait, Baluchi is Khalid Sheikh Mohammed's nephew. He allegedly prepared the hijackers on how to function in Western culture and helped with the travel plans and the money transfers for the operation. His attorneys say the torture he endured left him with significant medically diagnosed brain damage. Walid bin Atash, Atash is a senior lieutenant in Al-Qaeda who helped Mohammed plan the 9-11 attacks. Ahead of the 9-11 attacks, he took flights on U.S. carriers across Southeast Asia to test airline security. Ramzi bin Al-Shib, Al-Shib trained in an Al-Qaeda camp in Afghanistan with some 9-11 hijackers in 1999. But the Yemeni failed to get a U.S. visa to take part in the attack and instead helped coordinate between the cell and the Al-Qaeda. His lawyers say he continues to suffer severely from the effects of torture and that the government itself labels him psychotic. And Mustafa al-Hosavi, a Saudi Arabian national, Hosavi allegedly aided the 9-11 hijackers with travel arrangements and money transfers. He underwent harsh interrogations by the CIA. His attorneys say he suffered rectal damage as a result. The five accused are on death row on charges of murder and terrorism. Since the proceedings began, prosecutors have viewed the case as open and shut, even without the tainted information reaped from the brutal CIA interrogations. Prosecutors maintain that the defendants provided enough evidence of conspiring in the 9-11 attacks, especially during interrogations conducted by the FBI in 2007. But defense attorneys argue that the FBI's involvement in the 2007 interrogations compromised the evidence. Tuesday's hearing will largely focus on the judge's qualifications and whether he is susceptible for bias. Lawyers for both sides may question the new judge for possible bias. The rest of the week will mostly involve meetings with military prosecutors and the defense teams. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.